spirit, you're uh, put into one body. There is great things. Without the Holy Ghost, without spirit empowerment, we can do nothing. And through God, we can do all things. And so it is the difference, literally, between life and death, spiritual life and spiritual death, is the spirit empowerment. So the spirit-filled life tonight, this was before the apostles had the Holy Ghost. People such as David, Moses, Aaron, others in the Old Testament had never experienced what we call the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And so Jesus is telling them right before his ascension, and he said, the Holy Ghost not yet given because he was not yet ascended. Verse 8, he said, but you shall receive power. If you don't mind, let everybody say the word power tonight. Power. power. This is a powerful church. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Notice it's after that you've got the Holy Ghost. And you shall be witnesses unto me. That term witnesses in Greek is a unique word because it is literally martyrs. You will be martyrs for me, witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and into the uttermost part of the earth. So to focus, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Aren't you thankful for the power of the Holy Ghost? Yeah, the Holy Jesus. Ghost can thank do anything. Jesus. It can thank change Jesus. every situation. It can do anything. I remember back, I'm sure you do too, when you first got the Holy Ghost. We never need to forget that moment we got the Holy Ghost. Let's pray together. Ask the Lord to do everything he wants to do with this word tonight. God, I glorify you. I love you, Jesus. God, let the word of Christ dwell in us richly unto all wisdom. Let your word run very quickly tonight, God, in Jesus' name. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Without faith, it's impossible to please you. God, let the word of Christ shine through us tonight. Speak through this vessel of clay, God, and let all of us know what it's like to live the Spirit-filled life. God, let us access the Spirit, not our own understanding, not our own power, but your power, God. Glory to the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for the power of the Holy Ghost. Thank you for saving a wretch like me. God, I glorify you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Why don't we say amen? I just think it'd be good to praise the Lord again. Amen. Praise the Lord. We love you, God. I praise you. I worship you. I glorify you. In Jesus' name. Why don't you turn to a neighbor and just say the power-filled life. The power-filled life. And you can be seated in the name of the Lord. The spirit-empowered life, or the spirit-enabled life, is really life and that more abundantly. You really don't know what it's like to live until you have Jesus Christ shining through the inside of you. We can look at God's creation. There are times that is just all inspiring to stand on a hillside and to see a waterfall or to see, you know, feel the breeze and to hear the birds and to see the majesties of God's creation. I was talking to a friend of mine earlier today and he's driving to Montana next week and my thoughts immediately went back as a boy that maybe the couple of times I had been through Montana, I think maybe once or twice, I was very young, but the, just the beauty, the majesty, they call it big sky country. But all of those things pale in comparison. The creation pales in comparison to the creator that comes to live on the inside of you and I. When you and I get the power of the Holy Ghost, it is the greatest experience, and it is the fulfillment of God's plan for all of eternity. For the first 4,000 years of mankind's existence, the Holy Ghost can come upon people and maybe empower people, come inside to empower people for certain acts and feats, but it never joined with their human spirit. Jesus said as much in John 7, 37 through 39, but he said the Holy Ghost is not yet given, for he was not yet glorified. When people get the power of the Holy Ghost, it turned 12 disciples from fearful people to world changers. In John chapter 20, verse number 19, we read this. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. 
You and I never need to forget that it is not us, it's the power of the Holy Ghost in us that does the work. Amen. And so we are like those uh, apostles, those disciples, you know, fearful till the power of the Holy Ghost comes on the inside of us. And the righteous are as bold as a lion. When we receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, it gives us a new heart, a new mind, and it makes us part of the new covenant. In Jeremiah chapter 31, beginning at verse number 33, we read this about the Spirit-filled life. It says, But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts. That God that was on Mount Sinai writing the Ten Commandments comes to live in the temple of God. He no longer lives in a temple made with hands, but in the temple of the Holy Ghost. You and I were created to receive the Holy Ghost. We have a God-sized void in our life to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I'll put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts just as the Ten Commandments were written with the finger of God. Now God writes his entire word in our hearts. The author of the Bible lives on the inside and will be their God and they shall be my people and they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying know the Lord for they shall all know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them saith the Lord for I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin no more no longer do we teach about knowing God through the commandments of men we teach knowing God through the power of the Holy Ghost you can not only know his word but his word can live on the inside of you. Amen. The spirit of God can live on the inside of you. It is transformative. As a matter of fact, among world religions, there is no other world religion, whether pagan or any other type, that has anything remotely like the baptism of the Holy Ghost, the creator God coming to live on the inside. That is the reason the baptism of the Holy Ghost is literally sweeping the world. By some estimates, it's estimated up to one billion people have received the baptism of the Holy Ghost speaking with other tongues as the Spirit gives the utterance. Because it turns religion from a letter of the law into a reality, into something that you can experience all the time. It's not just a feeling. It's like that old song said, more than a feeling. It is actually a reality that the Holy Ghost comes to live on the inside of every one of you. This is a spirit-empowered church. You know, we're a word church, we're a Bible church, but it all goes together because God's the one that wrote the Bible, and he comes and he lives on the inside of us. We can pray with the Spirit, we can pray with the understanding, we can sing with the Spirit, sing with the understanding. I'm so glad that I'm part of the New Testament church. This is not built upon man, but it is built upon Jesus Christ. It is not built upon the experiences and the teachings of man, but it is built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. The spirit-empowering experience is the greatest thing. It is the hope of mankind, and we're going to look at a little bit about that tonight. In 1 Corinthians 6, 17, it says that he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. When you and I get the Holy Ghost, he doesn't just come to live on the inside. He joins with our spirit, our human spirit. Yes. He becomes what he fuses with our human spirit. And so that is awesome. When Christ comes to live on the inside of us, we can face any situation, any problem, because we know we got Jesus with us. And Jesus and you always make a majority. In Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23, right now it seems like the world is in a rage in so many ways. But listen to what the Spirit-filled experience gives. Galatians 5, 22. Before we go there, you may have seen the videos already of people that were out at different marches and different rallies and different protests. And preachers, apostolic preachers would be there preaching and people stepping forward saying, that's what we want. That's what we need. People want to believe in something. They want a, a cause to believe in. And no matter how righteous 
The cause in many instances has been in the last several weeks. I'm going to tell you the baptism of the Holy Ghost is the greatest thing in all the world. Amen. The baptism of the Holy Ghost will bring white, black, Hispanic, Asian, American, Indian, and every mixture together. Because it's by one spirit we're all baptized into one body. I often say you can't be anti-Semitic and believe in Jesus because Jesus is a Jewish carpenter. Yeah. So you have to so Jews. It's for Jew, Gentile alike. I am so thankful for the power of the Holy Ghost. Thank it is God. truly the power of God and the salvation. Can you say amen? Amen. 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 Galatians 5.22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. You'll never know how to love till you get the Holy Ghost. Right. Joy. You'll never know what real joy feels like till you get the Holy Ghost. People wonder, why you're going through so much? Why do you have a big smile on your face? Because you got the Holy Ghost. Peace. You'll never know true peace till you get the Holy Ghost. Yes. Long-suffering. You'll never know how to suffer long, joyfully, till you have the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Gentleness. True spirit-filled dove of the Holy Ghost gentleness. You'll never know it till you have the Holy Ghost. Goodness. Totally pure motives to help others get everything they need in Jesus. You'll never know that till you get the Holy Ghost. Faith. You'll never know what faith is till you get the Holy Ghost. Meekness. How to serve God in humble strength. Meekness. Or temperance. Not just self-discipline. A lot of people can have self-discipline. Olympic athletes can have self-discipline. But temperance in our emotions, moderations. With the power of the Holy Ghost. And notice this in verse 23. Against such there is no law. That means you can have as much love as you want to have. You can have as much joy as you want to have. You can have as much peace as you want to have. A law is a limit. You can have as much long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness as you want to have. I don't know about you, but there ain't no party like the Holy Ghost party because the Holy Ghost party don't stop. I want to have those things in abundance in my life. Why don't we just glorify the Lord a little bit? God, I glorify you. I love you, King Jesus. Hallelujah. And in Jesus' name. And God has also given to the believer uh, the ability to have gifts of the Spirit. If you don't mind, let's everybody say gifts of the Spirit. Gifts of the Spirit. The gifts of the Spirit are this. 1 Corinthians 12, verses 8 through 10. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. To another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. Notice, this is not magic tricks. And this is not something you learn. This is gifts of the Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, the gifts of healing by the same Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But all these work of that one and the self-same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. I'm thankful for the gifts of the Holy Ghost tonight. This is a powerful church. You can lay hands on the sick and see them recover. You can have a word of wisdom for somebody. You can have a word of knowledge for somebody. You and I, we can have the gifts of healing for somebody. You can have the working of miracles in your life. You can have all, you can discern spirits. Why? It's not in your flesh, it's in the power of the Holy Ghost. I'm thankful for the power of the Holy Ghost. Paul wrote to the Romans, Romans chapter 14, verse 17, about the kingdom of God and the spirit. He said, for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but it is righteousness. It's being in a right relationship with God both in an eternal sense and in an actual sense, a holy life, and peace in his righteousness, and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. You can have peace. The storm is raging in this world. Satan, it seems, is loose because he has a short time, but you and I can have peace in the midst of the storm. Hallelujah, because we've got the power of the Holy Ghost. In Romans chapter 8, verses 26 and 27, it says this, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. The Spirit-filled life includes praying with the Spirit. You can pray with groanings, you can pray with tongues, 
There's times, I don't know what to pray. There's times I just get down to pray, and all I do is speak with tongues. There's other times I pray with English. There's other times I do a little bit of both. People talk about prayer languages, on and on and so forth. But I'm going to tell you, you and I, when you get the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you can pray with the Spirit. The Holy Ghost of God can pray through you. This world, I've often wondered, even in the last few weeks, if the world is not going through some of the things it's going through, it's because people are not taking the time to yield, to pray in the Holy Ghost like they need to. You know, there's so many things like social media, gaming, and all those things that in some instances, it's not a matter of right and wrong. It's a matter of better and best. It's a matter of, well, that may not be a sin to tweet, you know, a lot, but the Bible says redeeming the time for the days are evil then maybe that time would be better spent praying and praying in the Holy Ghost. Yes. You know, maybe relaxing your mind, playing a game isn't a sin per se, but maybe if those things go to extreme and they're not in moderation and temperance, maybe that time could be much better spent yielding ourselves praying in the Holy Ghost. And so the world needs people that will yield to praying in the Spirit. We have got to have apostolic praying like we used to have. We've got to have apostolic anointing, things that will not leave through the power of the Holy Ghost. We've got to have it because where there's much prayer, there is much power. Where there's little prayer, there is little power. Where there's no prayer, there is no power. I want to be a prayerful person in the Holy Ghost. The Bible says pray without ceasing. Paul says, I thank my God I speak with tongues more than you all. What's he talking about there? Praying in the Holy Ghost. God wants you and I to pray in the Holy Ghost a whole bunch. Romans 8, 27, it says, He that searcheth the hearts, knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh an intercession for the saints according to the will of God. A prayer closet is still the place of change. You can do so many things in your life. You can do whatever, but I'm going to tell you, more things get changed in a prayer closet than get changed anywhere else. Amen. A prayer closet can turn a bad situation into a good situation. Prayer closet. Hallelujah. In Romans chapter 8, verses 9 through 11, we'll close with this about the spirit-filled life. It says that you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Notice you got to have the Holy Ghost. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by the Spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. But if you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if you do the Spirit... Be mortified the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, the Spirit filled life, they are the sons of God. I wonder if we could stay to our feet right now. And why don't you let God bring somebody to your heart, mind? Maybe somebody's been real heavy on your life. Why don't you pray right now and ask the Lord to minister to them? You might pray in the Spirit. You might pray in with the understanding. Let's pray in the Holy Ghost. No, we serve the Creator God. God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you see the miracles, signs, and wonders that we need. God, when I'm praying right now, I feel so many hurting hearts, heavy spirits, people, God, that have been praying the same prayers for years and years and years, wanting you to minister and wanting you to do something. And God, some of that, we're just taking up our cross daily and following you. It's our thorn in the flesh, God meant to keep us humble. But God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm asking you to minister. I'm asking you to do a work, God, where there seems to be no way. Let there be an amazing in-gathering till the fullness of the Gentiles come in. In Jesus' mighty name, let this be the greatest times of harvest that we have ever had. Let us as a church walk in victory. Let us walk in overcoming. Let us walk in anointing, God. And the yoke is destroyed by the anointing. God, in Jesus' name, give us the greatest week of our life. Thank you for protecting us, God. Let us walk in victory. Let us walk in truth, love, and anointing. In Jesus' name, 
in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Why don't we say amen? Why don't we just glorify the Lord together because he's good. I glorify you, Lord. I love you, King Jesus. I praise you, God. 